Hi, my name is Avidia. This is Peter taking a nap. <laughs> Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, I am very happy to teach you and give you tips on how to play Lost Ruins of Arnak Expedition Leaders Expansion, designed by Min and Elwin and produced by CGE. A very cool expansion to one of my favorite games. If you want to learn how to play the base game, watch my other video. I love this expansion because it adds a lot of everything. It also adds a new angle that I don't think I'm going to be playing without. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. It helps a lot. Like in Lost Ruins of Arnak, you still play an adventuring archaeologist, but this time you can actually choose the type of leader character you can be. There are six to choose from. They're all very different and all very cool. There's also new temples, a new moon staff, a whole bunch of new components, and they all merge seamlessly into the base game without changing how to play it, just making it a lot more fun. So leave the old character boards in the box and randomly pick or choose one of the expedition leader boards. Do not use the four starting cards from the base game. Instead, pick those for your leader. Also, pick one of these cute campsite tokens that matches your color. Don't forget to replace this assistant and this artifact. Take the old ones out of the game. Mix all the new items, the artifacts, the idols, the new assistants, the new sites and guardians together with the base game. For the rest of the setup, it will depend on the leader you have. I will explain the leaders later. For now, let me explain how the new Red Moon staff works. When you play this staff, at the end of each round, you now discard up to two cards on the left and the two cards on the right of the staff instead of just one. This lets you circulate through the items and artifact cards faster, which is really cool since there's so many new ones to discover. This is Sparks. She likes smaller boxes. Let's have a look at the research track. It's a little bit more difficult than the temples on the base game, but definitely worth learning it. To use them, you basically put this on top of the main board. We're going to have a look at the monkey temple first. The key difference in this monkey temple is that now you have an artifact in the middle of the research track. You draw the cards from the artifact deck until you draw an artifact worth exactly three compasses. Then shuffle any card you drew back in the deck. This artifact will never move for the rest of the game. You can use its power once the hourglass reaches it. Only the hourglass can activate it, as the notebook must take this path as indicated here. Also note that all the bonus tiles are placed face down and work like those found in the temple row of the base game. Another cool thing is that now you can find interesting items before you reach the temple. When your magnifying glass reaches this level, you can research two point tiles and this level, two or six point tiles. Of course, you still pay the cost indicated and to buy the 11 point tile you still need to reach the top temple row. The costs to advance are also a bit different as here you need to also pay the travel costs like a car or a boat and a plane at this level. There's also some new types of rewards for the magnifying glass and for the notebook. Here the magnifying glass lets you use the silver side of one of the assistants from the supply and here with a notebook, you either take a new silver assistant or upgrade one you already have. And here you activate any level one discovered site, occupied or not. And here you can refresh both your assistants. You cannot refresh the same assistant twice. Now let's look at the other temple, the Lizard Temple and its Mighty Guardian. The key difference in the Lizard Temple is that you place a random guardian here face down. It is revealed by the first magnifying glass reaching its level. You pay its standard cost or cards to defeat it as an action. This guardian cannot be moved and you cannot move further up the track until the guardian has been overcome. The player who overcomes the guardian will take the guardian and put it in their play area. However, if it is not overcome at the end of the round, all the players with their magnifying glass at that level will receive a fear card and players who also have their notebook will receive two fear cards. After you've set up all the idols on the main board, shuffle the four idols you had as leftover from the setup. Place them face down in a stack beside this row here. If there's no unoccupied level one site, then this does nothing. There's also some new types of rewards for the magnifying glass and for the notebook. When the notebook reaches this level, activate any unoccupied level one site before the volcano destroys it. You return the tile and the guardian if there's one to the box. Reveal the top idol tile and place it on the site. It can now be discovered all over again. Let me explain the big change in the game. The six expedition leaders. 
While they're all different, they also have similar new abilities. In addition to the usual idol effect, all leaders have blue idol slot effects, which let you use special blue powers. And since in this expansion you do not have to use the idols in order, you can use them at any time. I'll explain each leader in more detail in their order of complexity, starting with the captain. He's an ex-Air Force pilot whose courage inspires many to follow him, so he starts with three archaeologists. To set up the captain, take the grey archaeologist, which you can use like any other archaeologist. Also, on your player board, you have an extra action space where you can call an assistant for help and use the silver effect of one of the assistants available on the main board. His blue idol spots give him a compass and a plane. His starting cards are also pretty interesting. One helps him hire pilots. He starts with three fear cards as his past war trauma resurfaces here in the hidden fear, which counts as minus two points if not exiled by the end of the game. His piloting card is great to reach new sites and hire two planes for one coin instead of four. His transmission card gives him more choice of rewards the more archaeologists he has already deployed on the main board. The archaeologist calling an assistant does not count for this card. Now let's look at the falconer who knows the ways of the animal kingdom and uses her eagle to retrieve items. To set up the falconer, all you need is her eagle token and place it at the start of her eagle track here. Throughout the game, you'll find ways to go up the eagle track at the start of each round or using a guardian's boon to move the eagle instead. Her blue idol spots let her move the eagle one step up and collect a compass. You can use the eagle as an action to return it to the start of the track and collect one of the benefits on the way back. Her starting cards also help her move her eagle and get better guardians. Her falconry card, but also her animal bond, which gets better as she defeats or faces more guardians. And her tracking card allows her to pick amongst the top two guardians when discovering a new guardian. The Baroness is very wealthy and she has many ways to get more items for her expeditions. To set up the Baroness, place one coin on round two, three, four and five that she will collect at the beginning of these rounds. The Baroness also has a special delivery card that lets her put an item she's just bought immediately into her hand. The special delivery always comes back into her hand at the beginning of each round. Her blue idol spots give her still more money and let her pick one extra card from her deck. That and her extra income means that she's going to be buying pretty cool items. Her starting cards are also based on extra income and better items. In addition to better income, her connections let her exile the leftmost card and refill it, giving her more choices of items. Her research notes let her buy a jewel for two gold, which is brilliant. And her resourcefulness rewards her for the items she has played this round. The professor studies lost cultures and civilizations, therefore he's an expert at finding new artifacts. To set up the professor, take the suitcase token and three artifacts from the top of the deck into your personal archive. Also place one compass on round two and four and one tablet on rounds three and five that he will add to his suitcase at the beginning of these rounds. His blue idol spots give him one gold and one resource upgrade and the compass will go in his suitcase. The compasses in the suitcase can only be used to buy artifact cards and the tablets in the suitcase to activate the artifact abilities and for nothing else, not even upgrades. Also, once per game, when you've bought all three artifacts from your archive, add three new artifacts from the top of the deck and also put one compass into your suitcase. His starting cards also help the professor benefit from artifacts. His preservation card lets him upgrade a resource. Our necology lets him replace one artifact from his archive with one from the card row. And his linguistics rewards him for the artifacts he has played this round. Those in his suitcase do not count. The explorer is a loner and prefers to explore the island on her own and can therefore explore a lot more sites this way. The explorer only uses one archaeologist, so leave the other in the box. Also give her two snack tokens and place the one with a compass on the round three, which she will collect at the beginning of round three. You can spend these snacks to reuse her archaeologist, placing a snack token in its place. Other players can go there, but you won't be able to go again this round. You must pay the gold or compass if it has one, but you can use the snacks in any order. All your used snack tokens return to your board at the end of the round. Her blue idol spots give her one compass, one gold and a boot. Her starting cards also let her use her snacks for special abilities. 
Cartography gives you one tablet and the use of one face-up undiscovered idol for one snack. While hike lets her activate one campsite for one snack. Finally, scouting lets you draw two level one sites to choose one. Finally, the mysterious mystic has found ways to exile fear to power his rituals. There's no special setup for the mystic. However, after you've drawn your full hand of five cards at the beginning of every round, you also draw a fear card into your hand unless the fear deck is empty. Whenever you exile a fear, place your card on your ritual pile on your player board here. The fire icon below symbolizes the ritual icon and the effects are here. Remove two fear cards from your ritual pile for one compass and one gold. Three cards for a three compass discount when buying an artifact or four cards to overcome a guardian. His idol spots also give him fear cards. He also has two blue idol powers and both let him exile cards. This one also gives him an arrowhead while this one lets him perform a ritual. In this case, it's not a free action. Remember that his fear cards in the ritual pile do not count as negative points at the end of a game. His starting cards are all geared to exiling cards and performing rituals. Divine Guidance and Meditation do just that, while Worldly Goods also lets him add a card from his deck into his hand. Finally, Blindsight lets you replace the effect of a newly discovered idol for an exile action. Pick the player aid for your leader and you're ready to start playing. The rounds in the game play exactly like in the base game. And at the end of the fifth round, you count the points and win the same way too. Now I'd like to give you some tips on how to win with each expedition leader. To manage his fear cards, the captain needs to use his three archaeologists as much as possible. This means gaining compasses or travel icons from guardians, cards, assistants, to basically discover new sites as early as possible. To make the most of her animal bond, she needs at least three guardians, so anything that helps her get guardians is great. It's a nice cycle because the guardians help her move up the eagle track, which in turn helps her get more guardians. Anything that gives the Baroness golden items is great for her. Try to buy expensive and powerful items that you can use more often rather than a lot of cheaper ones. Also, getting an assistant that gives her gold and extra cards to play is fantastic. The professor should prioritize to buy the artifact in his archive first and play artifacts as much as possible. It's a good strategy to buy cheap artifacts, put them in play faster. Find ways to get travel icons so you can move around a lot, not necessarily overcome guardians. You will need a lot of compasses to do that. The mystic needs to balance exiling fear cards and getting new ones. Make sure you don't get too many fear cards and then you're not able to exile them. So that's how you play Lost Ruins of Arnak Expedition Leaders. It's a beautiful expansion. In my opinion, it makes the game even better without making it more complicated. So I think that's how I'm going to be playing Lost Ruins of Arnak. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. And if there's a game you would like me to teach, leave it in the comments. I'll definitely check it out. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is here. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.